All right, so our next topic to cover is formula-based routing. So this is another routing option that you can add to your models rather than just using the standard static routing where you define a certain percentage of vehicles to take specific routes. So using formula-based routing, you can have vehicles make update de decisions on the fly. So as they're traveling through their network, you can drop in those same routing decision start points. And for each of those, you can define a specific formula. And as the vehicles pass over that point, they will check the conditions of that formula and then choose their route selection from there. And these can be set up for static, partial, and partial PT routes. So in order to set up this formula-based routing, you'll just open up that particular routing decisions list. And then within that list, there's an attribute called route choice method. And in here, you can change that dropdown from the static option to a formula. And then in the relations window on the right-hand side, you can see the different routes that are laid out. And for each of these routes, uh, you can now select a formula to be used rather than having that default relative flow value set up. So next I just wanted to go in a little bit more detail about what this formula window looks like. So once you go to add it, there'll just be this large white space where you can add in all of your conditions. And then on the right hand side, there are some built in functionality. So the first option is to take a look and just pull in any predefined or user-defined attributes that are available for the vehicles themselves. And then you can insert different operators if you needed to do any um, math or do some logical operators using AND or OR. You can insert some different built-in functions And then you can utilize the table lookup, which will allow you to look at different object types and pull in those attributes in addition to the vehicle attributes. So here are some different use cases where formula-based routing could come into play. Um, the first one is just looking at a border crossing where maybe vehicles need to go to different inspection areas or looking at different taxi queuing areas where maybe vehicles need to make decisions about what queue line they're going to go to. Um, this could involve maybe counting up the number of vehicles on specific links and then routing vehicles um, to different links that maybe contain the minimum. And then really you can set this up for any vehicle property. So you may have a specific vehicle type that needs to be routed along a different path. Maybe it can't take a specific local road um, or just has a different area it needs to go to or you can also create user-defined attributes if you want to send vehicles to maybe a specific section um, for an airport having them go to a different drop-off areas based on airlines so a lot of different options for setting all of this up so the example we're going to look at today is a recycling and disposal center which is located in Fairfax Virginia and really what the question that we're trying to answer is, can we model vehicles going to these specific areas using the built-in functionality so that we don't have to use COM and we don't have to set up individual specific vehicle types and set up the routing to utilize those. So we took this uh, little PDF here where we have the different areas set up and then went ahead and built this system model. So let me go ahead and Pull that up here. So here is the model that we've built. So we have a few different areas. We have our recycling area down here. We have uh, the trash disposal area, household hazardous waste section, and then on the left we have a yard waste and a white goods recycling area. And then we also have a couple of main parking lots. So we have the staff parking down here in the bottom right. And then 
in the upper right, we have uh, this larger area for the larger trucks to park. So now I'm just going to go over some of the model setup here. So this is the entry point into this um, area. So the very first thing that we'll need to take a look at is actually assigning these vehicles to one of these areas. And so this is done using these vehicle attribute decisions. So we've created a UDA on the vehicles themselves just to hold this transfer station destination. And then the vehicle attribute decisions can be set up to assign values to this attribute. So one option is to just assign a straight value. So in this case, for any of the staff vehicles that are coming in, we're just assigning this a value of six so it can be assigned to that particular area. And these vehicles will just enter the network in the first 200 seconds of the simulation. After that, the remaining vehicles will need to be assigned to one of the other areas, which would be numbers one through five. And so this is just using a, a distribution here which will randomly assign vehicles to one of those five areas. And as the vehicles enter the network, they're first going to pick up a static routing decision here. And so this route will lead vehicles through the entire area as a whole. And then in order to assign vehicles to the individual areas, we're going to use partial routes. And so these partial routes will take it into effect when a vehicle's on a static route. And this partial route lies within that static route. So the start point of the partial route is going to be downstream of the static route start point. And then the end point will be upstream of the static route end point. So that partial route will really just live inside of that static route. And it's just a way to route vehicles within that to different locations. So this partial route routing decision contains different routes to each of these areas. So we've got one here for each area set up. And then over here on the right is where we actually define those formulas. So for the most part, these areas are just going to look at that user-defined attribute for that transfer station. And it's just going to check the number and then assign it to that particular area. So for the recycling center, it's going to pull any vehicles with number one assigned. Trash disposal will look at number two. Household waste will look at number three, and so on. Uh, now, one interesting thing I did want to point out here is that the trash disposal area actually has three different queues. and we have some stop signs set up here because there's a, a way station that occurs right before they go to the actual area. So in this case, I've just set up these trash disposal routes to travel over each lane, but still have the same formula. And internally in VISTM, right, what this will do is just assign vehicles kind of evenly spread to each of these lanes. But this would be another opportunity where you could create um, some more complex formulas that maybe look at the count of vehicles on each link and then do assignment based on that rather than just having vehicles evenly spread throughout those three lanes. And then the other route that is slightly different is for the truck parking. So any of those large trucks going to this area. These don't have an attribute assigned to them. So in this case, the formula is just going to look at that vehicle type. So here we're just converting it to a number and then checking to see if that number is 200, which is the number for all of the heavy goods vehicles. And so those trucks will just be automatically assigned to this um, area based on that vehicle type. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and play this here. And as you can see in the first 200 seconds, we'll have all of those staff vehicles coming in. So they'll just go all coming into work and going to that parking lot. And then afterwards, you'll start to see some of the other vehicles coming in. And so we have all of the vehicles here set up with a different color scheme. So I have the legend displayed here in the lower right. 
And this is set up within the vehicles and network. If you just click on that color scheme here to open up the graphics parameter window, we have the drawing mode set here to use color scheme. And then that color scheme is just looking, again, at that same attribute, that transfer station destination. And then we just have different colors set up for each of the numbers. And then I added in a name here so that that name could be displayed in the legend. So once all the staff are coming to work, then you'll notice we have some vehicles coming in um, so that they'll be starting to get assigned to all of these different areas once all the staff get out of the way and get parked. So each of these areas is set up using parking lots, and each one has a slightly different dwell time set. So for the most part, they'll just go to one of these areas and then park for a couple of minutes, and then they'll exit the parking lot and continue on their way. And here in the middle, you can see any of the vehicles going to that trash disposal are getting distributed to one of those three lanes. And they're just going to stop briefly at these stop signs and then continue on to that trash disposal area. So again, this is just another way that you can have vehicles update their decisions without having to use COM or specific vehicle types. Um, so it's a really flexible option where you don't have to just use static routing and define all of those vehicle splits um, from the get-go.